Hello, welcome to our Patch Sports News Update, and I have with me Coach Patrick Holgan from West Virginia Wesleyan College. Um, you have a whole background in sports, a, a lot of years, sorry to make you feel old, but a lot of years in a lot of different arenas, so to speak, and uh, now you hold some titles at West Virginia Wesleyan that allows you to see the business side of it, the AD side of it. Um, let's talk a moment about the importance that a parent plays, the role that a parent plays in their child's development to help them maybe gain purchase or interest in a sport or keep interest in a sport. Um, when you sit down and have that conversation, I know you have a varied background. I, last time I saw you, you were coaching a U8, U10 team, a U women's college coach, ODP program director. You have a broad spectrum of seeing parents from eight years old, kids up to Olympic level. If someone were to come in and ask you and say, okay, Coach Patrick, my kid is eight or nine, and I'm not sure what their uh, reach may be or how far they might go in a particular sport, whether it be football, basketball, baseball, soccer. What advice would you give them as far as looking at that eight or ten-year-old and what road they should look at, what things they should look for, um, what they should go out of the way to find? What would you tell them if they approach you with that general question? I know that's a big question. It's a big question. It's the question of the year, right? Yes, yes. Well, Dave, th this is what I would tell a parent and all the parents if I was sitting in front of them. And, and number one is uh, be very supportive. Find the resources for your kid. Right. Keep the environment fun. Yep. Keep them motivated one way or the other. Um, and in doing so, it, 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 takes, it, takes, it takes some time from the parent in order to provide the kid everything that they that they need. And, and when I talk about resources, when I talk about uh, a kid's love for the game, the parents have every bit as much to do with the development of the love for the game as the coach himself. Right. And uh, the parents can make the difference. The kids need role models. Right. The kids need uh, your support in feeding them properly and giving them proper nutrition and and keeping them, um, uh, keeping their energy level high when they go to practice, so right. they're able to perform at the highest level possible. Now, with that, that that's a big category. Uh, the parents' involvement, specific, their diet, exercise routine, what they bring to the table, is that specifically even to an eight to ten to twelve year old? Ab absolutely, they're they're physiologically. Uh, just as responsive, if not more so, and sensitive uh, to the nu nutrients that are or are not given to them. Okay. And uh, as we all know, we need uh, to be nutritious in order right. to perform and our bodies to perform at the highest levels possible. Yep. And we talked a little bit earlier about injury prevention, injury rehab. Even at that age, a strained muscle can affect a child. And get Absolutely. Properly back. Uh, so when you talk from that aspect, um, a lot of times parents will just say, well, they're kids, let them be kids. What do you think is the age where you kind of say, okay, now we're going to take it more serious um, and get out of that stage of, well, if they're going to look at it more serious, we need to take steps. Where do you kind of see that cutoff? Or is there a cutoff? Or can you look too early? Can you look too late? Kind of what's your philosophy on that? Well, commitment is commitment. Okay. And I think when the kids are young, they should play multiple sports. Right. At one or at, at some point, if the kid is going to commit to a sport, it, they need to commit, right. and uh, they need to totally commit. And if uh, they have a genuine love for the game and they want to go and be the play at the highest levels and uh, perform at at, at their uh, potential, uh, then they need to focus on that sport and start to uh, start to develop every aspect uh, that has to do with that sport. Now, you do a lot of recruiting, obviously, for your college job in the ODP program. Um, what do you look for? Like, what's your, here's the hot ticket. I, I see this uh, child, and these are the skill sets I'm looking for. What's your favorite? My favorite skill set is the mental toughness, the work ethic of a kid. And um, then their ability to communicate. Yep. The first thing I do when I walk up to a field Put my head down. I listen, and I find the kids that I can hear on the field. Really, uh, that tells me who's leading. It tells me who has an understanding. 
and who's in charge. Is there any particular thing you would look at and say, well, I can develop this with a child, and, and I'll take this group of skill sets, and I'll work on this particular aspect. Is there anything like that that you say, okay, I can fix or add to? I will always take a good athlete because I can make that good athlete functional within my system. Okay. And so I can teach them the fundamentals uh, of the positions that they may play. Right. And they do not need to be prolific as long as they're athletic, they're fundamentally sound for that position, and then I can work with that kid. Define prolific. Because I'm not, I know what the word means generally, but I'm not sure how you're using it in the context that I understand. So what do you mean by that exactly? Well, there are players that uh, can play at the highest level, right. that, have, uh, that have the experiences nationally and internationally uh, that have really taken their game to a different level. And uh, being prolific is a superior ball handler in the sport of soccer. Okay. Uh, being prolific is a pitcher that can throw multiple pitches uh, at high speeds or with tremendous change-ups. Yep. So being prolific uh, in the sport of soccer in particular uh, would be someone that has craft, cunningness, yep. uh, has the ability to uh, lead their team with those attributes, yep. the ability to communicate. So uh, somebody who sets themselves apart um, skillfully, right. uh, tactically, uh, psychologically. So they're, they're just that apart. step above and you know it innately. Yes. Okay. Uh, is there anything that when you walk out on the field that, and I know you said you look for an athlete, look for those that are prolific in that specific uh, arena that you're looking for. Is there anything else that you would say, okay, um, a parent definitely must set the foundation? And you mentioned communication. Is there anything else you'd add to that? Now, as you said, you go out, you listen, you see who the team leaders are. Is there any other backbone skill sets that you think are important? And if a parent said, okay, you know, we may not, you know, even here in Rome County, we may not be a, a soccer hotbed, but if a parent said, I, my kid really enjoys soccer and we want to push it and we're going to go do a travel team and go to the ODP and work, uh, what, would, what should they look for? What would be the basis of those skill sets that they should develop with their own children? Always encourage your child to be coachable, to have a good attitude, to understand the team concept, to understand uh, what it takes to be the best that they can be. Um, I will always take a kid that listens, learns, applies, tries, uh, somebody who I can shape and direct, and somebody who will take uh, guidance uh, with some acceptance. Do you have a percentage that you see that play high school level and you go recruit them and then they play a different position for you at college because they have those attributes? Is that something that you see a lot of or how does that break down for you? I see a lot of that because, um, because many times in my sport, uh, defenders are not as, as uh, well developed technically in the state of West Virginia. So in order to play the game the right way, com the complete game, we need our defenders to have a, a tremendous skill set. Uh, so uh, I will take a striker and move them to the defense. And um, three of the last five years, my two outside defenders have been all region players, and they were strikers in high school. Wow. Okay. So that's a pretty big change. Yes. Going from offensive score, so to speak, back to defense. How did they take that transition? Was it welcome, or were they? Shooting? They wanted to be on the field. So they wanted to play, and that's where I wanted to play them. And that so. falls back to your understanding the team concept, being coachable. Right. Yep. Okay. And obviously very successful. Yeah. Awesome. Okay. Is there anything else you would tell a parent? Um, I know you've covered a lot of ground. Um, the one last thing I will tell the parents. For all you parents out there that have your kids in sports, it's everything you can do to get your kid new experiences, to get them out at camps, to get them um, playing in different communities uh, outside the county. Uh, try to do so. It will only benefit them in the long run in the sport uh, as well as with other sports. So that's what I would encourage yeah. parents to do as well. Yeah. And that's, you know, and you're, that's uh, something we talked about earlier, and you have that experience internationally and nationally. You're uh, athletic director at Wesleyan, head coach at Wesleyan, director of the ODP program. So that's pretty powerful words from a guy that knows his business. So, okay. All right. 
We'll have some more information, uh, more sports information, more soccer information from Coach Patrick. And, uh, Coach, we appreciate your time. Thank you. Thanks, so, Dave. Valuable, valuable information for parents to know. Great. And we'll be back with more. So thank you for watching, and uh, look out for some more videos with Coach Patrick Hogan from West Virginia Wesleyan College.